Hey everyone, I'm Mariana, and as a big fan of audiobooks, I feel like this video is very overdue on my channel. A lot of you ask me how I end up reading as many books as I do every month, and honestly, I would not be able to do it without audiobooks. Probably about half of my reading is done that way, and I love it because audiobooks are a lot of fun. So why do I love audiobooks so much? Well, first of all, a great narrator or a full cast narration can really enhance your experience of the story. For obvious reasons, they are acting out the dialogue. They can even draw your attention to certain things within the book and make you notice something that you might have missed entirely otherwise, simply because the voice actors are interpreting what they're reading to a certain extent, emphasizing things that you may have read differently in your mind. Also, as I already mentioned, audiobooks just help me read more because I can listen while doing other things such as driving or cleaning or organizing my closet, you name it. There are so many things you can do while also listening to audiobooks and they make those things a lot more interesting. Lastly, and this is a small thing that will not apply to everyone, but it definitely applies to me. I do not like taking my physical books outside of the house because I like my books to be kept in as good of a condition as possible. And when you put them in your purse and then take them out and then put them back in and God forbid you're taking them out at the beach or somewhere at the park where you can introduce outside dirt, just no to all of that. So audiobooks solve that issue. Also, audiobooks are very travel friendly because they're all on your phone. You don't need to put actual books into your suitcase. Basically, audiobooks are a lot of win. As far as some basic tips go, if you're looking to get started with audiobooks, my first suggestion is to start with something short. I'm talking about 10 hours or less. Now, of course, if you just can't wait to jump right into A Song of Ice and Fire, you know, you can do that. Nobody's going to stop you. But for most people, audiobooks that are 40, 50, 60 hours long are going to be a little bit intimidating, and I don't blame you guys. So start with something that is popular and that keeps it around that 10 hour mark or even less. Second, listen to a sample before you get the book to see if you like the narrator because the narrator can make or break the entire thing. This seems like kind of an obvious thing, but I know a lot of people who struggle paying attention to the book and if it's the book that's boring, you will know almost immediately. But if you're just struggling with zoning out and just can't stay focused, most likely it's come down to the narrator and they're just not a good fit for you. Also, to go along with that, do not be afraid to adjust the speed if the narration is too slow or too fast because that can make you zone out as well. I don't think I've ever encountered a reader who was too fast, but I have definitely encountered a lot of readers who are really good, but just a little bit too slow. You don't have to go double speed and make it incomprehensible, just even a little bit helps. I tend to listen to about half of my books on 1.25 speed, and that is usually perfect, and most apps are going to have that option these days. My last suggestion is something that I kind of had to learn the hard way, and that is do not buy audiobooks unless you know you're going to get to them soon. They're not going anywhere. You can always get them later. Once you get them, they are so easy to forget about because they're not physically in front of you. They're not on your shelves. They are in your app, and before you know it, you have a selection of 30, 40, 50 titles, and you try to figure out what to listen to next and just get overwhelmed and just 
leave all of that and buy another book that you're interested in. And I know this because I am an avid Audible user and they have a lot of sales. Sometimes the sales are just way too tempting and I've definitely bought books that have sat in my Audible app for a year, two years. I think I have a book that's been there for about three years and with Audible, you can only return books up to a year, so. Yeah, mistakes are made. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Audible in any way. I am just someone who uses Audible almost every day. I have used them for about five years now. I've tried other services that are similar, but I always go back to this one. I am, however, an Audible affiliate, and I do have a free 30-day trial with a free audiobook for you guys if you want to check them out. I'm about to give you some audiobook suggestions so you can try one of those or you can pick whatever you like but for more information check out the description box below all right so let's get into some favorites i have them broken down by categories and the first thing i'm going to talk about is full cast narration now i have never listened to a full cast narrated audiobook that i didn't like because they are a lot of fun just in general as a concept this production situation is is great. However, there's a clear leader among those, and that is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. The full cast production of American Gods is something else. Every narrator is fantastic, and Neil Gaiman narrates certain parts as well. So if you've been looking to pick up American Gods, but you're kind of intimidated because you've heard the book itself is kind of dense, 100% get the full cast version of American Gods. You will not regret it. It is excellent and it is the best. Then there are those stories that fit the audiobook format extremely well, potentially even better than the printed format. And I have three favorites in this category. The first one is Bird Box by Josh Mallerman, and this is narrated by Cassandra Campbell. You guys probably have guessed that I was going to talk about this one because I always talk about how great this audiobook is. In this case, we're dealing with a post-apocalyptic setting that is very reliant on hearing because these people, they can't open their eyes. If they look and see something outside, it makes them go crazy and kill everyone around them and then kill themselves. So listening to this just puts you in that situation and makes you pay attention and be tense just as much as the characters. And that is awesome. Next, there is You by Caroline Kepnes. This is narrated by Santino Fontana. I apologize if I'm butchering names right now. Probably am, but yes, this book, which you probably have heard about if you haven't, it's an interesting one. It's from the perspective of a stalker and it's written in second person point of view. So when the narrator is speaking, he is addressing the person he's stalking as you. And when you're listening to that, it sounds like he's stalking you. It makes it extra creepy. This is just meant to be an audiobook experience, and it is, it's really great as an audiobook. I highly recommend it. Finally, there is The Martian by Andy Weir, and this is narrated by R.C. Bray. I'm sure a lot of you know this story, either because the book was very popular or because of the movie with Matt Damon, and the book itself is done through logs, and hearing the narrator read these logs just makes them really come to life. Also, this narrator in particular is excellent and he really brings a lot of personality to Mark Watney who just on the page has a ton of personality and that just really really works. The audiobook for The Martian was extremely entertaining and the log format really worked out for the audio format. Next up, we just can't ignore the audiobooks narrated by their authors because that just brings something 
extra to those books. The author knows exactly how they wanted their book to be perceived. They know every inflection they intended for the characters and for the prose. So it is always a delight listening to authors narrate their own books. This particularly works great with memoirs because Obviously, a person reading a book about their own life is the whole next level. However, when Neil Gaiman narrates his own book, it's just automatically in my library. It's on pre-order. Whenever a new one comes out, I'm adding it because Neil Gaiman is by far my favorite narrator. I would buy books narrated by Neil Gaiman even if he didn't write them. He is that good. He is just so great at storytelling. And there's something about his voice and the way he plays with words when he reads the books that I just absolutely love. Now, if I had to pick a favorite, it would be really difficult. I would probably have to go with either the graveyard book or the ocean at the end of the lane. But as far as authors narrating their own books go, I just don't think you can go wrong with Neil Gaiman. My favorite genre to listen to on audio is fantasy, particularly fantasy series. There's just something about fantasy in general that makes me want to listen to someone read it out loud. And I have three fantasy series that are my absolute favorites and I am ready to re-listen to those right now. I can finish this video and just get started with either of those. Actually, all of the books I'm talking about today are something that I would love to re-listen to at some point. So my first favorite is very obvious and that is A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. This is narrated by Roy Dautrice and he does an excellent job with those books. I feel like I've said this about every single audiobook I've talked about in this video, but that's because I just, I feel like they're excellent. The thing about A Song of Ice and Fire is that you have so many characters and so many different settings that you really need a good narrator in order to not have them all blend together. You need someone who's going to do a lot of voices, a lot of accents, and Roy Daughtry's does really, really well with all of that. There's also a certain quality to his voice. He sounds like an older gentleman that really kind of fits that kind of dark and gloomy setting. It is kind of difficult to explain. You would have to listen to a sample if you haven't listened to those audiobooks. But if you, like me, are due for a reread of A Song of Ice and Fire, do consider the audiobooks because they are very good. The next favorite is also pretty obvious, and that is Harry Harry Potter narrated by Jim Dale. Everybody loves those audiobooks. Everybody knows they're great. I don't need to sell you on those. I'm just going to let you know that if you haven't listened to Harry Potter narrated by Jim Dale, then you should give them a try because you won't be able to stop. My last pick for this category is the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie, narrated by Stephen Pacey. I discovered Stephen Pacey because of this trilogy and I was blown away. I am not kidding you. There were moments where I had to remind myself that this was only one person reading those audiobooks. He has so many different voices and so many accents to deal with. Kind of like Roy Daughtry's with A Song of Ice and Fire, except for I think he does it even better. These are also dark fantasy novels that are politically complicated. They have a lot of different characters coming from different backgrounds. And once again, you have to make them sound different or they start blending into one confusing thing. Stephen Pacey is just a master at all of this. I now pretty much consider buying every audiobook that I see his name as the narrator for because he was out of this world. And from that, I'm just going to transition into simply really, really good narrators. I also have three favorites in this category. And the first one is a Christmassy horror novel. It's a little early for Christmas. For some people, it's a little early for horror. If you're not a fan of horror outside of 
the colder time of the year. However, if you haven't listened to Joe Hill's Nosferatu narrated by Kate Mulgrew, you are seriously missing out. She truly gave it all with her performance with this novel. I think her performance actually made me feel for the characters more than I would have if I just read the book. Obviously, I don't know because I only listened to it, but she is so, so good. I think she's actually an actress outside of narrating audiobooks, and if that's true, it definitely shows. She is wonderful. Then I have a very recent favorite and a recent release. Well, the book isn't recent, but the audiobook is a recent release, and that is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, narrated by Dexter himself, Michael C. Hall. I talked about it in my wrap-up a few months ago, and if you haven't heard me talk about it, I will link it. But this audiobook just made me realize that I need Michael C. Hall to narrate as many Stephen King books as possible. He has a certain melancholy to his voice that fits the tone of Stephen King novels, but also he definitely can give a performance when it comes to different characters, when it comes to creepiness. It's excellent. And last, but certainly not least, a big favorite of mine is The Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie, narrated by Dan Stevens. If you remember him from Downton Abbey, he's on Legion now. He is so freaking good. Now, there is also a full cast narration of The Murder on the Orient Express, but I am going to set my foot down and say that there is no way a full cast can beat that Dan Stevens performance because he has to deal with accents from all over Europe in this book, and he manages it. It's, it's just a pleasure to listen to. This is another one of those performances that you're just going to forget that it's just one person doing all of these, like with the First Law Trilogy and Stephen Pacey. Dan Stevens is also someone who is now on my auto-buy list. If I see an audiobook that he's narrating, chances are I'm going to get it. He is so, so good. The first Dan Stevens book I listened to was Frankenstein, and that one his performance kind of almost made me cry, and I was really, really sad listening to Frankenstein. But The Murder on the Orient Express is probably, out of all of these audiobooks, something that is a very good starting point for audiobooks in general. It's a very short book. I think it's around five or six hours long, and you have a great narrator. You have a fun mystery going on. You just can't go wrong with this one. And that's it for my audiobook favorites. I I will probably do an updated version of this at some point later, not this year or anything, but at some point in the future because of how many audiobooks I listen to and I always have new favorites to talk about. But at the moment, these stand out to me. And if someone asked me for audiobook recommendations, these would be the ones that I would give. I would love to hear some recommendations from you, so please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to my channel, ring that notification bell to know my new videos are coming out, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I hope you're having an awesome day, and I will see you very soon in my next one. Bye!